Okay. And I have shared my whiteboard now. Okay. So let me pick up a nice color. Right. So we are going to do exercise 11B. Question number one, part. Oh, can we start from exercise 3.1? The last one I sent you. Three, okay, okay, okay. All right. Exercise 3.1, question one. Question one, right? Yeah. Okay. We can start with that. Right. Okay, let me read the question now. So it says, an object's displacement in meters at t seconds is given by the function. So this is the displacement function. 2t cubed minus 4t squared plus 3. Calculate the object's displacement at time t equals 3. Now, the first part is very easy. We need to calculate the displacement at t equals 3. So, we are just supposed to find displacement when time is 3. So, all you need to do is you need to plug in 3 in this function. Okay. So, it is yes. 2, 3 cubed minus 4, 3 squared plus 3. The answer is going to be 2 into 27 minus 4 into 9 plus 3. So, let's just do it directly. You can also do that on the calculator. Okay. Are you getting 21 as well? Yes. Okay. Very good. Now, this is 21. Okay. Let's talk about the next part of this question. That's part B. Part B. Okay. It is find the object's velocity equation. Okay. So, when we have displacement, it is 2 t cubed minus 4 t squared plus 3. You should know that the derivative of displacement with respect to time gives you velocity. Okay. Yeah. Always remember. So, this is the formula that we are supposed to use. Let's differentiate this equation. So, this would yeah. be the derivative of displacement with respect to time, and that would be 6t squared minus 8t, right? And I can yeah. write it as velocity equals 6t squared minus 8t. This is the answer of the second part, and this is the answer of the first part. Okay. So, we are done. With the first two parts, let's talk about the third one. Yeah. So it says, what is its velocity at time equals 3? Now we have the velocity function 60 square minus 80. We need to find the velocity when time is 2. So that is easy. We just need to plug in T in V. Yeah. 6. Instead of T, I'll write down 2. 6 into 4 minus 16. So this would be 24 minus 16. It would be 8, right? Yes. Okay. I'm not writing down the units because we are not sure if this is in meters. Yeah, it is in meters. It is in meters. It's meters. So this would be yeah. meters per second. This would be meters. So units are important. Yes. In this case, certainly we should have written the units. Okay. This question was easy. Anything that you have not understood in this part in question one? Um, yeah, you know, Percy, were we not supposed to put three in? Uh, for part, oh yeah, yes, definitely, definitely. This is three. I made sure that it is two, and I don't know why I, yeah, okay. <laughs> that is the second part of question two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you are right. This is three. Time three, three, and three. So it would be nine, and that would be 24 with 30 yes this would be 30 meters per second very good this is the answer excellent yes. okay so are you okay with this yeah okay so i clear this and let's talk about the second, second. question of this exercise second question part okay it says at time t 
equals zero, a dog breaks its lead lead and runs along the straight path until it is caught again at t equals three. Its displacement in meters at time t seconds while it is running free is modeled by the equation. So I'll write down the displacement equation. It is a long equation. One yeah. by five t to the power five minus two t to the power four plus seven t cubed minus 10 t squared plus 5t. So let's make sure that I written the equation correctly. 1 over 5t to the power 5 minus 2t to the power 4 plus 7t cubed minus 10 squared plus 5. This is correct. Right. Let's talk about the first part. Now the first part is calculate the dog's initial velocity. Okay. Yeah. What do you understand by initial? It's zero. What is zero? The initial velocity. No, the time would be zero. Yeah, very good. Okay, always remember, whenever you have the word initial, just use t equals zero. And they want yeah. us to find the velocity. So we don't know the velocity equation. This is the displacement equation. So step one would be finding the velocity equation. Okay. So that would be yeah. v equals. I'll differentiate this. I'll differentiate displacement with respect to time and that would give me V. So it is going to be 5 over 5 t to the power 4 minus 8 t to the power 3 plus 21 t squared minus 20 t plus 5. This and this would be cancelled and the initial velocity is going to be 0 minus 0 plus zero minus zero plus five. That is five, right? And I'll plug in zero yeah. in T. All these terms would be zero. So this is five meters per second. Yes, anything that you have not understood in this part? No. Okay. All right. So let's see the second part. Okay. Now in the second part of this question, we need to calculate the acceleration at time t equals t. You need to find the acceleration at time t equals 2. Now, this is an easy question, but for this, you need to find the acceleration equation. For that, we need to refer to the velocity equation that we got. So, it was v equals t to the power 4 minus 8t cubed plus 21t squared minus 20 t plus 5 yes this was yeah. the velocity okay. yeah and now in order to find acceleration i will be differentiating velocity with respect to time okay and that would give me acceleration you know this yeah okay so acceleration would be 4 t cubed minus yeah. 24 t squared plus 42t minus 20. Okay, let's make sure that we have written this correctly. So 4t cubed minus 8 into 3 is 24t squared plus 42t minus 20. Yeah, okay. And now we need to find the acceleration at time equals 2. So mm -hmm. I'll plug in 2. Yeah. A equals 4 into 2 cubed minus 24 into 2 squared plus 42 into 2 minus 20. So this would give you what? You can just check that. 4 Zero. into 8 minus 24 into 4 plus 84 minus 20. Uh, this is 4. Okay. So this would be 32 minus 24 into 4 plus 84 minus 20. So this is zero meters per second squared. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. So any doubts about this? No. Okay. Very good. So this is, these were the two questions of exercise 3.1. Okay. So yeah. should we start 11B now? Yeah. Okay. So question one part, which? Um, what part shall we do? <clears throat> A. Sorry? A and D. A and D. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it is exercise 11B. Question number one, part A. Find an expression for the velocity and acceleration of a given particle that the displacement is given. Okay. So the displacement equation is four t to the power four minus one by t. Okay, let's talk about the solution. So in the first part, you need to find the equation of velocity. For that, we will be differentiating displacement. So yeah. velocity is calculated by differentiating displacement with respect to time. So four into four would give me 16 t cubed minus. This initially is t to the power minus one. I'll do minus one and I'll multiply it by the old power. So that was minus one. So this would be this. 16 t cubed plus one by t squared, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is velocity. In order to find acceleration, I need to differentiate this velocity with yeah. respect to time. So this is going to be 3 into 16, that is 48. So 48t squared. Okay. Now this would be minus 2, 1, or write down this way. Right. Yes? Yeah. Okay. This is so basically acceleration is the second derivative. Yeah, acceleration is the second derivative exactly of velocity. Yes, you can think about it of displacement. Sorry, yes. Okay. 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 So, yeah. but but always uh, try linking acceleration with velocity and velocity yeah. with displacement. That would help you with the plotting as well. Because, you know, when we make the acceleration time graph, for that, we refer yeah. to the gradient of velocity time graph, okay? So, just remember okay. this relationship. Yes, you are right. It is basically the second derivative of displacement. But it could be that the examiner is just giving you velocity, right? So, in that case, you should know that you would be directly derivating it with respect to time, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Very good. Let's talk about the second part of the same question. So it is part B. So sorry, not part B. It is part D actually. D. Okay, so this is again the displacement, but they have written that using X. That is completely fine. Yeah. So it is 3t to the power 4 minus 2t cubed plus five divided by two t. Okay, this is the displacement function. It's two t. Okay, now always remember, uh, you need to find the velocity and acceleration. For that, you would be differentiating x or the displacement, right? So let's simplify this first, just so we can derivative easily. So I will do it this way. I will divide 2t with all the terms individually. Just so I am able to differentiate that easily. Okay. So t would be cancelled. 2 and 2 would be cancelled. t would be cancelled. And this would give me 1.5 t cubed minus t squared plus 2.5 t to the power 
minus one. Yes, Madiha. Any doubts in this thing? No. One second, I need to um, write the last part. Okay, all right. Okay, got it. All right. So we need to find the velocity. Velocity would be the derivative of displacement with respect to time. Yeah. And that would basically be 3 multiplied by 1.5 t squared minus 2t minus 2.5 over t to the power 2, right? Yeah. Okay. So 1.5 into 3 would give you what? 4.5? Yeah. Okay, so this is 4.5. T squared minus 2T minus 2.5 t to the power minus 2. This is velocity. Now, in order to find acceleration, I will be derivating velocity with respect to time. So 2 into 4.5 will give me 9 t minus 2. And then minus 2 with minus would make it plus 5 mm. over t cubed. So this is going to be the equation for acceleration. Yes, Madhiha, is this okay? Yeah. Okay, are you sure that you have understood this? Yeah. Okay, so can you try the second part, part B, find the velocity and acceleration? Of the same question? Uh, yeah, of uh, question one, part B, yes. Okay. Just so, you know, we can practice in class as well. Yeah. <clears throat> um would the velocity be 2t squared minus 2 over t cubed very well done excellent yes um and the acceleration would be 4t um plus 6 over t to the power of 4 very well done yes excellent that is correct very good okay so should we do the second question now yeah okay let's try doing Question number two. Okay. So it is a particle is moving in a straight line at time t seconds, its displacement x meters from a fixed point O 
on the line is given by the equation x equals to t cubed minus 8t. Find the velocity of the particle when time is 3. Okay. We need to find the velocity when time is 3. So, velocity when time is 3. So, again, for this question, step 1 would be finding velocity's equation. So, velocity equation would be uh, calculated or would be found by differentiating displacement with respect to time. So, that would give me 3 into 2, 6 t squared minus 8. Now, I need to plug in 3. So, velocity would be 6 into 3 squared minus 8. This would give you 6 into 9 minus 8. And the answer would be 46 meters per second. Yes. Anything that you have not understood in this part? No. Okay. Very good. So the next part is calculating the acceleration when time is 2. Okay. Now we need to find acceleration when time is 2 seconds. For that, yeah. we need the equation for acceleration that would be calculated by differentiating velocity yeah. with respect to time. So that would be basically differentiating this. So it would be 12 t. And now when I'll plug in t, acceleration would be 12 into 2. That would be 24 meters per second square. So this would be the answer. Yes. You can note this down and tell me if you have understood this or not, okay? Yeah, I get it. Okay. So I am going to clear the screen and let's talk about the third question now. Yeah. Okay. Question number three. A particle P is moving on the X axis. At time t seconds, the velocity of the particle p is v meter per second in the direction of x increasing. Okay, just understand that v is 12 minus t minus t squared. The question is, find the acceleration of p when p is instantaneously at rest. Okay. We need to find the acceleration at some time. And at that time, what we know is that the particle should be at rest, right? So when a particle or anything is at rest, what do we know? We know that when something is at rest, at that time, the velocity is going to be zero, okay? Yes. So for this, we need to calculate this time. All we know is it is a time such that the particle is at rest. We will calculate this time using this equation and the fact that velocity would be zero. And once we have the once we have the time, we can find acceleration and then plug in that time. Okay. So again, step one would be calculating the time at which the particle would be at rest. And then I'll tell you how to find acceleration. Okay. So in order to do that, I'll plug in zero minus t squared minus t plus 12. I'll simplify this. I'll take common. I'll take the negative sign out and it would become t squared plus t minus 12. Yes, Madhya, anything that you have not understood? Um, no. Okay. So we can do it by middle term breaking? Yeah. All right. So... This is going to be t squared plus, sorry, 40. 
minus 3t minus 12. Right, so I can take t common, t plus 4. I can take minus 3 common, t plus 4. And this will give me one factor as t minus 3 and the other factor as t plus 4. Yeah, yes. Okay, t minus 3 and t plus 4. And this would be equal to zero. So one time would be three and the other time would be minus four. So Madiha, like are both of these times the times when the particle would be instantaneously at rest or what? No, it's only t equals three. Very good, excellent. Because obviously time is always positive, but they have also positive. written this in question where t yeah. is greater than or equal to zero. Okay? Equal to zero, yeah. So that is important. Okay, now we have time. We have time equals three. We need to find acceleration at time equals three. So for that, we need acceleration equation. That would be calculated by differentiating velocity with respect to time. Yeah. So that would be minus one minus two t, right? Yeah. Okay, now I need to plug in three. So acceleration would be minus one, minus yeah. two into three, and this would be minus one, minus six. This would be yeah. minus seven meters per second square. This is the answer. Yes. Minus. Right? Yeah. Okay. So yes, this was question number three. You can note this down. Yeah, got it. Okay, all right. So let's do question four, right? Yeah. Okay. Question number four. A particle is moving in a straight line. At time t seconds, its displacement x from a fixed point O on the line is given by the equation of displacement is 4t cubed minus 39t squared plus 120t. Find the distance between two points where P is instantaneously at rest. Okay. So again, we need to find the distance between two points. So think about it this way, that this is your horizontal axis. This is your particle P. It's moving in a straight line. And let's say this point is O. Okay. Now, we need to find the distance between two points where P is instantaneously at rest. Okay. You will see that when, when we will try finding out those two times, we will first be calculating the velocity and that would certainly be a quadratic equation because this is cubic, so velocity would be a quadratic equation, okay? So once we'll simplify uh, and plug in V0, we will get 2t, right? Yeah. So that means there would be two times such that the particle is at rest. Let's say first yeah. point is A and the second point is B. Our end goal would be finding this distance between those two points. Yes. Okay. So this yeah. is the idea. Let's just, this is time t equals zero. Let's see what is the time at A and let's see what is the time at B. Okay. Yes. Uh, for that, we need to differentiate displacement. That would give me 12 t squared minus 39 
into 2, that would be 78 T plus 120. Okay. So yes, this would be 12 T squared minus 78 T plus 120. Okay, now what is the next step? Now I need to plug in V0 because they are saying it is instantaneously at rest. So I yeah. can take four common. No, not four common. Let's like we can do that for two. Okay, in fact, for three as well, it would work. So I can take three common just so it's a simplified equation. This would make it four yeah. t squared minus 26 plus 40. And this is 40 square. Okay, and now I can obviously take two common as well. That means I could have taken six common. So yeah, that is okay. Let's <laughs> just write down the simplified equation. So this would be 2t squared minus 13 plus 20 equals 0. Yes? Yes. Okay. This is T. Okay. Now let's try doing it by middle term breaking. Yeah. Because obviously um, it looks like we would be able to find two factors. Yeah. Okay. So it is T. Yes. So two numbers such that when we multiply them, we get 40. When we add them, we get 13. So yes, what do you think? Five and four. Five and four? Five and eight. Right? Type. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Five and eight. Okay, very good. So two T squared minus 5t minus 8t plus 20 equals 0. I can take 2 common. It would be 2t minus 5. And I can take minus 4 common. That would be 2 t minus 5 equals 0. So the first factor would be t minus 4 and the second one would be 2t minus 5 equals yeah. 0. 0. And now we would have t equals 4 and 2t equals 5. So it would be t equals 2.5. This means here the time is going to be 2.5 and here the time is going to be 4. 4. Okay. Yeah. These are the two points. So in order to find the distance between A and B, I need to find the distance, the red distance and then the yellow one. That would basically be the displacement of the particle from point O after 2.5 seconds and after 4 seconds. So Madhya, can you calculate this? And this. Okay. Um, so when T equals 2.5, is it going to be 118.75. Yes, very good. And so this 20... is 118.75. And yes, what about the other one? Um, 112. Okay, let me check that as well. So this is four. Okay. Okay, yes, this is 112 
and we are okay I, okay i'll tell you now i'll tell you this is one one two exactly right and now uh, apparently this does not make sense because the red line is a shorter line this value yeah. is 118 and this is 112 yeah but what exactly it is i shouldn't have written this this way the fact that this is displacement okay so i'll tell yeah. you I, I i'll explain this so just imagine that you have you have a particle let's say and yeah I, i'll make the story i let me write down these values on some side so at 2.5 seconds it is 118.75 meters and at four seconds it is 1112 okay now i'll tell you okay so this scenario which we assumed initially is wrong but that is completely fine we are certainly going to assume wrong in the beginning and the answers are going to tell us that the situation is different so the particle started from here okay it reached yeah. point a at 2.5 seconds the velocity yeah. was zero okay so the particle yeah. stopped here now once the below and this displacement is 118.75 velocity was zero and then the particle started moving in this direction okay the part yeah. the direction was different you can check that just plug in 2.4 and then plug in 2.6. Just plug in these two times and see what velocities you are getting. Okay. Um, what should I do? One one. 2.4. Just plug in 2.4 uh, in T. Okay. Keep it for what would be. This would be just before it, so it would be one one. Just just one second, just one second, one second, one second. I'm talking about plugging in two point four and two point six in this, okay, in the velocity function. That would help you understand the direction of velocity. 12 into 2.4 squared minus 78 into 2.4 plus 120. So this is 1.92 meters per second. Okay. And then plug in 2.6. And the Velocity is negative uh, minus 1.68. 1 okay. So what have yeah. you um, understood? The fact that before time equals 2.5, at 2.4, yeah. the velocity was positive. At positive. exactly 2.5, the velocity got zero. And then the particle started returning. And how yes. do we know? We know that to the negative yeah. direction. And after, yeah. and at exactly t equals 4, yeah. T equals four would be somewhere here. Wait a second. This is this. Okay. So this at this point the displacement was more. It was one one eight point seven five meters. Then the particle started returning. At uh, after t equals two point five, and then at t equals four, t equals four. At this point, the displacement of the particle from this final point was this yellow line. It was one one twelve meters. Now I'll explain this. Okay, okay, do not worry. Okay, listen to me. Before two point five, the direction of velocity was positive after yeah. 2.5 the particle started moving this way so this is yeah. let's say it is t equals 3 then it's t equals 4 at t equals 4 again the velocity got positive. zero it at t equals 4 it was zero okay do you remember this oh, oh okay, okay okay yeah yeah so we, we had to find the distance between these two points yeah. 
So now we need to find the difference between 118.75 and 112. And that would give you what? 6.75. Very good. 6.75 meters is basically the distance between these two points. But the idea, the understanding of the idea is very, very important. Yeah. 6.75 meters. Okay. So did you understand this or not? Should I explain this again? Yeah. Okay. So... This is what we have, okay? There's a particle and it started moving at t equals zero. And we did some homework. So we got that at t equals four and at t equals 2.5, the velocity was zero. So let's say this is the point when time was 2.5. And at this point, the velocity got zero. The displacement. Displacement is the distance with direction. Displacement from O to this point is 118.75 meters. Okay. At 2.5, the velocity was zero. At 2.6, the particle started moving in this direction. Okay. So exactly at T equals the displacement from O, the displacement from O was 1, 1, 2. This means that the distance between these two points, this is two, uh, T equals 2.5 and this is yeah. T equals 4. The distance is yeah. this green line. So this green line would be calculated yeah. by doing red minus yellow. Okay. Yellow. Yeah. Yeah. So it is yeah. 118.75 minus 112, and that would give you 6.75 meters. Yes, this is very, very important. This example was very, very important, right? So yeah. any, any doubts in this? No. Okay. And now initially, it is completely fine if you misunderstand the scenario and you make a wrong drawing. Even I did that. Anyone would have done yeah. the same because... Obviously, yeah. we are not going to waste our time in calculating all that. It's, Once yeah. we get our values, we would automatically understand that, okay, the displacement initially was more and at this time, the displacement is less. This means that the particle started returning, okay? Return. And yeah. this is, I would say, a very important scenario because you would get to see such questions. Yes. Okay, so you can note this down and then I can talk about the such question. Yeah, got it. Okay. So I'll read this. A particle P moves in a straight line at time T seconds. The acceleration of P is A meters per second square and the velocity is given by V equals KT minus 3 T squared. This is the velocity. The initial acceleration of P is 4 meters per second square. Part A is to find K. Okay. So I'll just write down the important things that I would be using. Initial acceleration is 4 meters per second square. And first part is to find K. Okay, Madhya, I want you to think about this question and tell me, okay? The situation is that the velocity, you, you know, you have the velocity equation. It is KT minus 3T square. And you have yeah. the initial acceleration, okay? So, initial means what? Initial means at time equals zero, the acceleration zero. is oh. four meters per second square. Okay, 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 okay. Just the idea. I don't want you to calculate the whole thing, okay? Just the idea. So you do dv over dt. Very good. And then where it says 
T you would play zero and okay. A equal two would equal four and then you would solve for K. K. Very good. Yes, that is correct. Excellent. So first we need to find acceleration. That would be yeah. calculated by differentiating velocity. And that yeah. would be K minus six T. Next I'll plug in T equals zero and equate that to four. So four is yeah. the acceleration at time zero so this means k is six right this would be zero at t zero yeah oh yeah so k would be four yeah okay very good so this is what we have okay let's talk about the second part of the same question so it is going to be part b using the value of k Found in part A, find the acceleration when P is instantaneously at rest. So velocity is exactly 4T minus 3T square. Very good. For instantaneously at rest, yeah. we know that velocity is going to be zero. So I'll yeah. calculate those times when the particle is at rest. So whatever thing we had, yeah, we had particle again. Okay. So V is zero. I'll simplify this so I can take T common. It would give me four minus three T. And this would give me T equals zero and T equals four by three, right? Yes. Okay. These are the two times. Now we need to find the acceleration when it is instantaneously at rest. So the acceleration would be four minus six T. Okay. So A is going to be four minus six over four by three, and this would give me one and two. Four minus eight, and that would be minus four meters per second squared. Okay. Now this is your instant, uh, this is your acceleration. When we say instantaneously at rest, that does not count initial, the, the, the fact that it is initially, uh, the, the initial thing, I'll tell you why. Instantaneously means that your particle is moving and then instantly it, it, it stops. Okay. Yeah. So that is when we can say that the velocity would be zero, right? Yeah. Okay. So the fact that we were getting two times, one time is T equals zero and the other time is T equals four by three. So we are only going to calculate the acceleration at four by three. Because we already have, cal they already gave us that the initial acceleration was four. So yes, acceleration would be four at t equals zero, but that would not be uh, this thing, okay? They are saying, find the acceleration when particle P is instantaneously at rest. So when they're saying instantaneously at rest, the only time would be this one, okay? This would not be yeah. when it is instantaneously at rest. Yeah. Okay, so yes, this yeah. is why the answer is minus four meters per second square. So you can note this down. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right, let's talk about the sixth question. So it is a print head on a printer moves such that its displacement is centimeters from the side of the printer at time t seconds is given by, and then we have an expression, and the interval is between zero and three seconds. 
find yeah. the distance between the points when the print head is instantaneously at rest. Now, this is simple. We need to write down the equation of displacement. So, displacement is 1 by 4 4 t cubed minus 15 t squared plus 12 t plus 30. This is displacement and we need to find the distance between the points when the print head is instantaneously at rest. So first we need to find the instantaneously at rest thing, right? We need to find that yeah. time when it is instantaneously yeah. at rest and that would be when velocity is zero. So we need zero. to find velocity first. Yes. Okay. So I need to find velocity for that. I will be differentiating this. Let's keep yeah. one by four outside and it would be 12 T squared minus 30 T plus 12, right? This is the velocity. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now I'll plug in zero and zero. this equation would be 12 T squared minus 30 T plus 12. I can take six out. I can take six common. So this would give me 2T squared 2t squared minus 5. Yes. Minus 5t plus 2. Okay. And the final quadratic equation is 2t squared minus 5t plus 2 equals 0. Yes. So it would be 4 and 1, right? Yes. 2t squared minus 4t minus t plus 2 equals 0. So I can take 2t common. This would give me t minus 2. And minus 1. And minus 1. So that would give me t minus 2 equals 0. Yeah. So t would be 1 by 2? Yeah, and 2. And 2, okay. So what exactly is the question? The question says, find the distance between the points when the print head is instantaneously at rest. So we need to find the displacements at this point and this point and find the difference because now we have understood the yes. concepts, okay? So yeah. just find the displacement at 1 by 2 and tell me whatever you are getting. Okay, so S equals to a quarter of minus fifteen here with describes zero point five. Yes. What exactly is your displacement? It is mm -hmm. 8.1875, right? Yeah. So it is 8.1875. And what about this time? Um, for the two, one would be one second. Four into two cubed. Minus fifteen into two squared plus twelve times two plus thirty. Is it six point five? Thirteen over two, which is yeah, six point five. Okay. So again, now we know that why it is more and why it is less, right? We have understood that concept. Are you yeah, okay with so this? you minus them for me to yeah, back. Yeah, so the distance between these two points would be? 1.6875. All right, okay. So, one point six eight. 
1.6675. Yeah, so we can write it down as 1.69 meters. This is going to be the answer. Yeah, it says one decimeters. So one decimeter oh, so is 1.7. Yes. So this could be the answer. Yes. Okay. So any confusions in these questions? Anything that you have um, not understood? No. Okay. So do you want to note this time? Yeah, I got it. Okay. All right. So I'll stop sharing this and I'll stop the recording. So if you have any questions, you can ask.